Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sward, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this uh, video today is the 2021 Advent of Code Day 3. They call it binary diagnostic. I call it a relative pain in the ass. So, so the problem goes, here is, the, here is my solution to part one in Python. And uh, let's just describe what's happening here to follow along. So I get my data as always, and the data looks like this, uh, I think 13 characters or something, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 characters, and there's a thousand, thousand binary uh, numbers here, 12-bit numbers. And what I have to do is basically work my way through character for character, and then against all of the thousand numbers here, um, and I have to, for, so for bit for bit, I go, how, you know, are there more zeros or more ones in the first bit? And if there's more ones, then we put the one in there. And if there's more zeros, we put the zero and we just keep going across. And that's the whole process to be able to generate the, forgive me for forgetting the the gamma, the gamma for the thing. And so, so that's all. And then the epsilon is the opposite. If there's more zeros, or if there's more ones than zeros, then we keep the zero. And if there's more zeros than ones, we keep the ones. So that's what this code is basically doing. You can see that here. And you could say, okay, for every, so what is this thing? For every element, so every byte, or for every bit inside of this thing, because this thing reads off everything into a, like a bit string. Uh, that's just how we did things here, a bunch of zeros and ones. And it says, okay, for every, for all of the one, uh, th for every one of the 12, 12 bits, figure out, go through every one of the thousand elements or however many elements and check to see if, if you have a zero. And if it is a zero, then add to the, you know, increment it or else increment the ones. So you go through, go through, go through, and at the end of the day, if there are more zeros than ones, then gamma gets the zero and M ep epsilon gets the one. Otherwise, gamma gets the one and ep epsilon gets the zero. So that processes everything through, and we end up with a bit string, just like we end up, it's a string. It's, I'm, and again, I'm not proud of this work. Let's just say that, I should have said that up front. I am not 100% proud, I'm not even 20% proud. I got an answer. I got to move on. I got other things to do, <laughs> and uh, maybe one day I'll come back. And I'm not coming back. I'm not coming back to review this one. Um, so, you, and you just do this over and over and over again, and you get your gamma and epsilon as bit strings. And then, in easy, very easy language here, I can take, I can say, oh, hey, this gamma is a string. You know, it's in binary converted into an int, and it will do so. And you multiply the two numbers together, and you get, um, what do you get? Well, let's see. In a while, a couple minutes here. A hundred, or is that a million? One million seventy-one thousand seven hundred, or yeah, seven hundred and thirty-four. And that's at least that's the answer for my data set. Your data set will probably maybe be the same, maybe be different. I don't know. I just know me. So that takes care of part one, and then part two is kind of like they they usually do. Part two is the same but different. And in this case, this is where I, I just said screw it, and I duplicated all my code. And so instead of checking bit for bit, we, we continue doing that. You'll see that the code is very similar here. But in this case, there's an added part to this. And so in this, and, and again, I'm not proud of this. I copied the data into a secondary uh, list so that I could access it, because I need to process this whole data. And I, at least the way my code is, I need to process the data once for the uh, oxygen and then once for the CO2 levels. And so now the difference is you go through all 1,000 of the strings and whichever one, whichever of the digits, the zero digits or the one digits, at, at that place, if it's the more abundant one, then you basically go ahead and cut out the other ones from the list altogether. And you work your way down, like you see here, you work your way down until there's only one data point left one bit string and then you have your answer so basically if there you know and that that's what i'm doing i'm setting up a list of the zeros from for that element or for that uh, index value and i'm t and and i'm doing the same for the ones so i'm keeping track of how many zeros there are and how many ones there are at that position but then i'm also moving the data around and i'm transferring it from i guess i don't have to uh, I guess I don't. Ha I didn't have to keep the data, but anyway, I don't care anymore. Uh, <laughs> so, um, 
So you, you also append into those separate lists. And at the end of the day here, when you get through all 1,000 of them, if there's more zeros than ones, we keep the zeros list. Otherwise, we keep the ones list, and then we just keep on going, keep on going as much in, to the next element, to the, to the next element, and the next element until we get, you know, until we're down to one element. And so that, and it's the same exact thing down here below, but I revert, you reverse the one and the zero because that's the same as part one. If there are more, if there are more zeros than ones, use the ones. Otherwise, use the zero. And so with that said, and you multiply the two values together. Here's my CO2 value. Here's my CO. Here's my oxygen value. You multiply those two together, and on my end, you I think you see the answer: six hundred and six million one hundred twenty-four thousand nine hundred. So that covers this video, part three. It is ugly, 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 ugly code, but it's done. Done. Uh, Twenty minutes. The M Scroggs Advent Calendar goes live, and then I'm going to start focusing. Have a good night, everybody. Uh, this is a good problem, good fun problem. I don't know how I would even go start about doing this in other languages other than Python. Barely know how to do it in Python, but uh, a lot of fun. Hope to see you tomorrow, day four. What do we got coming? Let's find out tomorrow. Bye, guys.